The market for traditional jacketed hollow points is being challenged by technology that uses non-traditional bullet composites and designs. Lehigh Defense has created the Extreme Defender All Copper Bullet, which we'll be testing in the cartridge loaded and marketed by Underwood Ammo. The Defender is a lighter, faster option from the Penetrator product line. We tested the Extreme Penetrator in 2015, and it did just that, Extreme Penetration. It was impossible to stop with any gel testing format that I could throw at it. While I concluded, as did a majority of viewers, that the penetrator was most likely too much for self-defense, it might have some utility for woods protection. In this series of photos, the Defender that we're testing is on the left next to the penetrator. The design objective for the Defender is excellent barrier performance and substantial wound cavitation. Supposedly, the Defender will not penetrate to the extent of the penetrator bullet. Weighing 90 grains compared to 115 for the penetrator, it is in the realm of light for caliber. While both bullets share a similar fluted design, the Defender has a shorter OAL and smaller pattern on the nose. Based on those factors and lighter weight, we can anticipate that penetration won't be anywhere to the extent of the penetrator. This ammo is fast. 1,475 feet per second advertised, and the chronograph readings from two handguns support the advertised velocity. First, the Glock 43 with a 3.39 inch barrel. Here are the five shots measured from 10 feet. The average is 1,388 feet per second, which is only 6% off the advertised. Pretty good in consideration of the short barrel. Now, the Glock 19 with a 4 inch barrel. This group is incredibly tight with minimal deviation between the first four shots. The average is 1,474 feet per second. Recoil is quite manageable in both platforms, noticeably more abrupt in the smaller 43 than with the 19, but no worse than any other plus P's I've run through the 43 up to this point. Ready for the test shots, we have two blocks of clear ballistics gel, 32 inches total. Both of these have been recycled a couple of times. They are starting to get a little bit of color to them, and with some close-ups, you'll notice some artifacts in there as well. Two water jugs behind that, and behind the water jugs, we have a three-quarter inch piece of plywood. So most certainly, nothing is going to escape into the backyard today. Four layers of denim, IWBA testing protocol, which is... I think unnecessary for a non-expanding round, but to be consistent, we're going to use it anyway. I am really glad to see that. We captured all three shots from the Glock 43. Have a rough measurement already, 16 and a half inches, 17 and 5 eighths, and the deepest one is coming in at 18 inches. Let's take a quick look from the side, see if I can zoom in just a little bit, keep it in focus, try to catch all three. Let's just focus on these two for now. Be curious to see from the permanent wound cavity track if we can determine at what point that 18 inch bullet made a complete turn. Checking out the cavitation from the side, it appears that at its widest point, these tracks are coming in about an inch to an inch and a quarter wide. I would compare these to, say, 115, maybe 124 grain jacketed hollow points. Much better outcome than the Extreme Penetrator Review from 2015. We've captured all six, at least within the second block, just barely coming out of block number one. These are the measurements low to high on the Glock 19 shots, 16 and 3 quarter inches, 16 and 7 eighths inches, and then the deepest is 17 and a half. So it's interesting there's not that much of a difference between the barrel lengths on the Glock 43 and the Glock 19. If you want to compare cavitation between the 43 and 19 shots with the higher velocity out of the 19, really not noticing a difference. These are all coming in at about one inch to maybe one and a quarter, 
and let me focus in on the middle. That, there you go, that cavity is the turning point, I believe, for the Glock 43 shot, which coincidentally was the deepest penetrating, and it reversed. Coming into this review, I had a couple of primary concerns about the Extreme Defender. One, life or caliber. I'm more in the 124, 135, 147 range for 9mm carry. And then the fact it's a non-expanding round when up to this point, we just really haven't, haven't had a lot of success with those. But uh, the outcomes here were good. As I'd already mentioned, the velocities are really, really very good. And the recoil is quite manageable, even in the Glock 43. And that's a handgun I've only had for about a month now. So I'm just really now starting to get the feel for that. Penetration, for some folks, getting out of that 16-inch block might be a factor. For me, I kind of like that 14 to 18 inch range because of shoulder shots you might have, say, especially coming in from the right side. You can't predict the angle that's going to be presented to you in a threat and also extremities such as a hand or arm. With regard to penetration, one element uh, of this is that I used the second block. I've had some other tests where I used one block and we had pass-throughs. So I have to wonder about those tests, for example, the Polycase ARX. Something to think about there, and the cavitation. Cavitation resembled, say, a 115 or maybe a slow-moving 124 grain jacketed hollow point. So with the fluting and so forth, they, has, they seem to have achieved the effect of what you could see with cavitation from a jacketed hollow point. All in all, quite surprised by this, especially considering the results we had in 2015 with the Extreme Penetrator. The Extreme Defender might be something you want to consider. Thanks for watching.